Hi, my name is Jorge Gilad with the Fulton Sheen Prayer Group Apostolate. What you are about to experience is a journey in truth. And we want to share this truth with you. The Venerable Archbishop Fulton Sheen, known for his preaching and especially his work in radio and television. In the 1950s, his Emmy Award-winning television show called Life is Worth Living made him a household name. During his time in ministry, Sheen authored 67 books and recorded over 300 lessons. We believe that you will truly be blessed and enjoy these recordings of his 50 lesson series titled Life is Worth Living. God love you. Hello. The journey begins. In the next 50 lessons, you will hear the voice of Archbishop Fulton Sheen. He was uh, born in the late 1800s and died in 1979. He was first on air in 1920, became syndicated on the television broadcast in the 1950s. He had a tremendous ability to take deep philosophical concepts and, and make them bite-sized. In 1965, he, he sat down in his, uh, his, his personal apartment in New York. He sat with a microphone in front of the Blessed Sacrament in his own personal chapel and he decided to have a conversation, a conversation with you. He took in this conversation, the beginnings of understanding what it is it all about. He systematically builds a conversation where he starts with the anxiety of life. Finding, where most of us find ourselves at times, life with anxiety. He builds in a conversation an understanding of the deep mysteries of life. I, I think uh, of Star Wars when Luke Skywalker landed on that remote island and or that remote planet and, and he came in contact with Yoda, the small little creature that had a deep wisdom about him. And there Luke learned about the Force. Well, I invite you to have an encounter here with Archbishop Fulton Sheen. And, and I dare to say, you too, like Luke, will have a deep understanding of the meaning and purpose of life. God love you. And welcome to the Fulton Sheen Prayer Group Apostolate Show. Uh, today will be an introduction mm -hmm. to the Fulton Sheen Prayer Group Apostolate Program. And uh, we're going to unfold for you kind of what you should expect over these next 50 wonderful, I should say, wonderful episodes. And uh, I think you'd be very pleased. Um, as we begin, as we should begin, all of our Fulton Sheen Prayer Group Apostolate groups, we will do so by having Father Will Combs of the Brothers of the Beloved Disciple lead us in the invocation to the Holy Spirit. Uh, he's also the pastor of St. Mary Magdalene Catholic Church here in the Archdiocese of San Antonio. Father Will Combs, would you please? Yeah, thank you, Richard, and thank you all for joining us. Let us begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you so much love the world, you, that you so much love all of us, that you so much love each of us, that you send your Son to become uh, life of our life. To that end, release the Holy Spirit, that we may follow the way, the truth, and life. Bless our eyes to see, our our ears to hear, our, our hearts to love, our minds to learn, and our, our lives to live the good news. And we thank you, Lord, with anticipation of what we will receive today and these next 50 weeks. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. you so much, Father Will, Father Will Combs. Um, and now, as we begin each lesson, we will do so by praying the litany of humility led by Father Clay Hunt, uh, chaplain for the Criminal Justice Ministry here in the Archdiocese of San Antonio. Father Clay, would you please? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 O Jesus, meek and humble of heart, hear me. me. For the desire of being esteemed, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being loved, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being extolled, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being honored, Deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being praised. Deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being preferred to others. Deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being consulted. Deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being approved. Deliver me, Jesus. 
from the fear of being humiliated. Deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being despised. Deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of suffering rebukes. Deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being calumniated. Deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being forgotten. Deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being ridiculed. Deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being wronged. Deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being suspected. Deliver me, Jesus. That others may be loved more than I. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire. That others may be esteemed more than I. Jesus, Jesus grant, grant me the grace to desire. desire. That in the opinion of the world, others may increase and I may decrease. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire. That others may be chosen and I set aside. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire. That others may be praised and I unnoticed. Jesus, grant, grant me the grace to desire. It. That others may be preferred to me in everything. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire. It. That others may become holier than I, provided that I become as holy as I should. Jesus, Jesus grant me the grace to desire. It. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Father Clay. And I was waiting for you to say, from the fear of saying calumniated incorrectly. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, and here to explain why the need to pray the litany of humility at the beginning of each lesson, um, please, Phil, would you share with us uh, why? Why do we need to do that? I, I'm going to try to do that. Um, this is a, a famous prayer, not but not well known by Catholics, the Litany of Humility. It was created by Raphael Cardinal Mary Del Val, probably in about the late 1800s. He was the Secretary of State for Pope St. Pius X. And um, the first time I learned about this, uh, it was from an Axe brother, and he introduced it uh, to an Axe team. And this brother, uh, his name was Chris, is Chris, uh, when he... From him introducing it, I knew it was going to be a really good thing because this was a man that I'd watched on a transformation. And I really watched uh, on a transformation from being prideful to being one of the most humble people uh, I've ever known. And so I knew there was something very powerful in this. And as you go look at the structure of this uh, litany, there it's broken up into eight desires to deliver me from the desire of being loved. Okay, that's strange to our uh, human uh, heads and hearts. It doesn't seem like it makes sense, uh, but it is important in trying to achieve humility and getting rid of ego and pride. And that is uh, such a common stumbling block for all of us uh, to keep us from Jesus, from being like Jesus. Mm -hmm who was the very model of humility. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I started saying this, um, uh, this litany, and I felt it changing things inside me. And so when Jorge and I started uh, up the group that we were in, mm -hmm. quickly in, I said, hey, this would be a great way to start every prayer group. Because what we want to do is we want to put ourselves in a position the best position possible to clear out that ego, to clear out, to, to set the stage for listening to Bishop Sheen's uh, words so that they really filter in and get into our soul. And uh, from that, and for, for years now, uh, this, this litany has become part of my life, mm -hmm. but um, it, it, it does change you. It's just, even you don't even have to believe it, really. You just say the words and ask Jesus, and if, if, if you ask it with, with a uh, contrite and open heart, it will begin changing you merely by uh, reciting it. So, uh, and just to clear up uh, anything for our, our listeners, the word calumniated, uh, which Father Clay said so correctly, <laughs> that was beautiful, uh, means lied about. So cal uh, calumny is a lie and calumniated is being lied about. But uh, that others may increase and I may decrease. That is what this is all about and it will change your life just mm -hmm. to say just to say this litany. Amen. Thank you for sharing that, Phil. Uh, that, that's awesome. Now we know just a little bit more about the litany of humility. Uh, Jorge, if you would share with our listeners and our viewers um, the birth of the Fulton Sheen Prayer Group Apostolate uh, Program, uh, that way we, we may be more enlightened. Sure. Uh, um, you know, one thing that I want to say also about the Litany of Humility, Phil and I uh, have begun a Fulton Sheen Prayer Group uh, in the prison. 
we started the program at the at the Taurus unit uh, in Hondo, and we were teaching them the Litany of Humility. And as we were teaching them the Litany of Humility, that exact same week, the Holy Father put out a mandate uh, to the ambassadors at the Vatican that they would have to recite the Litany of Humility each day uh, as they came into the Vatican. Wow. So kind of a, an interesting thing is we see the, 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 the Holy Spirit bringing about a, a sense of renewal and the realization that we have to sometimes, we have to reset. We you know we think about our, our computers and our telephones and when they get all clogged up, the, the tech support says, well, power down and power up. Well, the Litany of Humility is exactly that. It is a spiritual power down and power up so that all those background processes go off and, and we are focused on being open, as she will tell us in the first lesson, to be open to something from the outside. Wow, amazing. The, the, uh, back, back to the, your question about where this came from. So uh, Sheen, as you've heard in the introduction uh, um, before the show, of who he was, but so it's 1965, and he's in his private chapel, and uh, um, he has uh, decides that there's uh, uh, two ways that he can do this program. He can pray, study, and take notes, and read from those, or he can put all that off to the side and then just speak from his heart. Well, he's, he's in a private chapel in front of the Blessed Sacrament. For some of you, we don't know what the Blessed Sacrament is, but, but you, you will hear later on. So he's in this mode, as it were, open to the Holy Spirit. And he's open to God, and God is revealing him. To, uh, in a way, we say he was speaking through him. And, and uh, so Sheen does all these 50 lessons without notes. So uh, there was a group of us men coming off an axe retreat at St. Bridget's in, in uh, 1993, and uh, they wanted to keep the, their zeal for the, for the Lord. They wanted to keep growing. And a friend of mine gave me the CD album of uh, uh, 25 CDs, A Catholic Catechism, You Shall Know the Truth. Uh, and I thought to myself, oh, well, no, that's a lot. 25 CDs. No, I didn't even own 25 CDs at the time. <laughs> and so I, I didn't want to do it. And, but uh, I was continuously nudged by the Holy Spirit mm. to, to, to play it. And so I did, and so I put it in the, in the CD player, and, and, the, and I heard for the first time this guy named Fulton Sheen. And his ability to take these big philosophical concepts and make them so bite-sized that the, 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 the guy on the street could just could, could hear them and begin to uh, maybe ask questions he'd never asked before. And so we, we presented it to the group. We found that while his message is so simple, it was yet so profound, and we decided to transcribe it. So we, we, we took all his 50 lessons and we transcribed it. And then in 98, when the, the Holy Father put out the Catechism of the Catholic Church, 450 years in the making, that the, we took the excerpts from the, from the Catechism and dropped them in each transcript as they relate to each lesson. So we built this compendium of, of, of the Catechism. But what, some of these words that you're hearing are maybe foreign. But I, it's really simple. This is a conversation with a guy who has been around the block. And he wants to share with us what is the, it all about? What is this meaning and purpose of life? And, and the fundamental question that many of us find ourselves asking, is life worth living? And so that's the, the essence of, of, of what this conversation is that we're about to hear. Um, we take this and we drop it into a small face sharing group. Um, you, we get, we get a, a small group together. We're going to meet for 50 weeks. And um, we start with an invocation of the Holy Spirit, the litany of humility. Uh, and then we're going to listen to Sheen for 24 minutes. But while we're doing that, you're going to ha have access to the transcripts. But the second part is just as equally important. Not only just listening to Sheen, is then we begin to ask each other the question, so what did you get out of today? And when we've asked for the invocation of the Holy Spirit at the beginning, when you, we pray that God would send us the Spirit, He certainly does. And so in this conversation that happens, the Holy Spirit arrives, and it leads us into a deeper understanding. And then finally, the, the last one-third of the program, which is, is equally as important, is that we, we learn to pray together, that we actually learn to pray for each other. So the output of this program is about becoming a prayer warrior. The output of this program is about learning our faith in such a way that we're able to share it. 
Uh, so no matter where you come, whether you're an atheist, and we've had those that come into the group, or you're a theologian, and we've had those, it, it really doesn't matter where you are in your journey, because 50 weeks later, you will be at a different place. The power of the Holy Spirit will lift you up from wherever you are to wherever God wants you to be. And so uh, it's a powerful journey, and, and, and uh, I just uh, invite you to continue. So I'm going to play a little video. Uh, uh, this is a video representation of the first lesson. The vast majority of people today are suffering from what might be called an existential neurosis. The anxiety and the problem of living the answering of the question, what is it all about? I know what you're thinking. Now you're thinking, now he's going to tell us to get down on our knees and pray to God. No, I'm not. And why? Because people who have an existential neurosis are too far away from that. Those who suffer from an anxiety of life do so because they live only for themselves. Their mind, their heart, each has been dammed up, and all of the scum of the river of life makes of the heart and mind kind of a garbage. And the easiest way out of this is to love people whom you see. Visit the sick. Be kind to the poor. Find your neighbor, and the neighbor is someone in need. Once you do this, you begin to break out of the shell. You discover that your neighbor is part of yourself and is a creature of God. So I am suggesting that you will not just reason yourself into the meaning and purpose of life. You will act yourself into the meaning and purpose of life by breaking the shell egotism and selfishness by cleaning the window of the moral life and allowing the sun to shine. If we do not love those whom we see, how can we love God whom we do not see? As, uh, as we are promoting in the Archdiocese of San Antonio, these uh, 50 lectures on Archbishop Fulton Sheen, who was the first evangelizer uh, to the TV station for the whole nation and even beyond the United States. He was a uh, San Antonio Padua good preacher and eloquent. We are very grateful that he was inspired to uh, record reflections on the Catechism of the Catholic Church uh, during his uh, prayer as he was uh, before the Blessed Sacrament every day for the Holy Hour. And so he was inspired by the Holy Spirit that he was before the Blessed Sacrament. And it's how he ended making beautiful reflections of our Catholic faith uh, in that intimacy with the Lord. I invite all of you who are interested in deepening your faith, your Catholic faith, to join one, one of these prayer groups that are going to be starting and multiplying more and more here in the city of San Antonio, in our Archdiocese. May you benefit by the uh, eloquence of Archbishop Sheen and his wisdom. He has a way to explain things in a very simple way, very profound way, and very logical way, so that we will be able to see uh, 
that faith and reason connect. And not only that, but his reflections utilize examples that they are very easy to follow and very interesting. And you deepen your faith through these meditations. Get information through some of our parishes where this is already established. One of them is Holy Spirit Parish. You can also uh, uh, call the Archdiocese for more information and we will provide it for you. May God bless you abundantly. And let us recall that there have been eloquent people preaching the gospel for many, many, many years in the history of the church. And today we have Fulton Sheen, one of us. Uh, he did his ministry in New York and he did it with the hope that eventually you and I would be also evangelizers, passing on the faith of the, of the Catholic Church. God bless you. going to be amazing. And uh, with uh, six of us gathered here today, I think part of what we need to be doing is sharing with our viewers and our listeners uh, just a little bit about us and why we're here and what we hope to gain from it and who we hope to impact with what we've learned. So we'll start off with Father Will Combs, again, pastor of St. Mary Magdalene Catholic Church. Father, what are you hoping to, to gain from this and how is it going to affect you? Your yeah, I'm really looking forward to this journey with you, and I really want to thank you for, for joining us even today, and I, I pray that you join us for these next uh, 50 days, or 50 times we meet, uh, because life is a journey. Um, and it's, it's, it's a journey worth, worth walking. Um, it's important that we begin with the end, with the kingdom of God, to seek first the kingdom of God. Like any journey, we always begin with a sense of destiny and sense of purpose. Um, and your life is full of purpose. Uh, uh, and God has a wonderful plan for you. And so it's exciting. God calls us to share the road together uh, with, with Jesus in our midst. So I, I first want to honor. I want to honor those uh, who, are, um, who are joining us. I hear from yeah, with Father Clay and, and thanks to Jorge and Phil that there's a, a family out there in our, in, in our prisons that are detained and locked up, but they've turned their, their prison into a monastery <laughs> and they're, they're learning and growing. And I want to say that I need you. I need your prayers. We need your prayers. We're in this together. We're called to, we're called to be one, one, one body in Christ, one family in Jesus who's in our midst. Um, you have tremendous gifts to, to evangelize the people around you and to intercede for the church and certainly for priests. Uh, I want to honor also uh, those who are very devout I want to keep learning and growing from, from this God willing someday they, to be Saint Sheen and, and from us where we're, we're fellow companions on the journey. For those who are asking and seeking and knocking, this is a great place to, to ask and seek and knock because we're all, we're all exploring. We're all asking and seeking uh, with the gift of Jesus, uh, our teacher uh, in our midst. I want to honor those who have find themselves locked up in all kinds of addictions and are trying to be set free. Jesus promises it's the truth that will set you free, and that's what this is all about, the way, the truth uh, to life, the life worth living. Uh, I want to honor all families and those who have family problems and struggling and crying out for help. Uh, we're called to be a bigger family, the family of Christ. And certainly um, those who are homebound, those who are elderly, uh, we're called to be young at heart by constantly learning. Uh, we have a hunger and a thirst for truth, and we're, we're often starving, starving for, for that truth. Um, so let me just share with you a little bit of my story, a little of my background. Again, I'm Will Combs, uh, wonderful upbringing. I was born and raised Presbyterian myself, wonderful upbringing uh, with my two older sisters and my mom and dad. But by the time I got to college, I was asking big philosophical questions and I didn't have answers. I just had questions. I mean, what's the use of living if my high school is just a yearbook, my parents are just a phone call, my home is just a vacation, my family is just a photo, and my childhood's gone? It's, it's dead. And, and who could I help? Everyone's going to die. <laughs> I need someone who's 
risen from the dead. <laughs> Do you know anyone who's risen from the dead? <laughs> okay, so it was in that kind of desperation. I had to let go of the mask. Of I uh, got it all together. I had to let go of my pride and my fears and 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 desperation. I surrendered and said, "Okay, God, save me. I'll do whatever you want. <laughs> my purpose now is to please you." And so I really began to seek God and, and please God. And I really kind of sensed God saying, "Well, prove it. Do you really mean it?" No, God, I really mean it. So I, I began to pray, and then I began to read Scripture, and I was asking and I was seeking and I was knocking and I'm glad to say I'm still asking and seeking and knocking I'm his disciple and he's he's an awesome teacher amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me I mean I knew suicide wasn't the answer but what is <laughs> the answer is Jesus <laughs> he's the answer and he led me to my third year in college where I was in Ecuador and I did become proud in the sense that okay now I know scripture now I'm with prayer God's with me and I need to evangelize the world before it's too late because the world's coming to an end <clears throat> So I told my parents, Mom and Dad, I love you very much, but I decided to drop out of college. I'm going to stay here in Ecuador, just preach among the poor, live the gospel radically, radically just like the Good Samaritan before it's too late, you know? And so uh, they, they said, well, we'll be praying for you, sweetie. We hope you change your mind. And, but anyway, this is what happened. Um, five days after they left, I was trying to be the Good Samaritan, live the gospel literally, and this poor guy, it's a Friday night, it's in the Quito, Ecuador, in the streets of the city of, of Ecuador, Latin America, and there I am, um, and he's, he's pushing his pickup truck, and he can't get it started. So I said, oh, I'll help you. I'll live the gospel. I'll help you. So I go that extra mile with him. And finally, the undercover cops come with their with their rifles. And uh, with the back of their rifles, they beat the daylights out of us. And <laughs> we're, we're a bloody mess on the streets of Quito as I'm praying. And then comes the, the police car and uh, throw us in the trunk. And I had a wonderful three, three nights, two days and three nights in the deluxe jail of, of, of Quito, Ecuador. Because little did I know the guy who... Uh, had stolen the pickup truck. He was stealing the pickup truck, and little did I know who I was helping. So uh, it was in jail that I realized I really need the church. You know, um, we have physical needs. We need to breathe. We need to eat and drink and sleep. But we also have spiritual needs. Are you feeding your spiritual needs? It's a spiritual need to come together in his name. Jesus promises where two or three are gathered together in my name. There I am. Jesus is peace. He's joy. He's, he's truth. He's understanding. He's wisdom. He's strength. He's courage. He's, he's humility. And this humility is to be free from all our desires and all our fears and all our self-centeredness. It's not about me. It's about God. And when God's at the center of our lives, that's when life has a wonderful journey and a wonderful destiny. And that's what this is all about, being church. So we need, we need worship. We need discipleship. And we need fellowship. So, you know, in some senses, the church is like a big ship, right? You know, and we really need the worship of, with humility to praise God for who he is in our midst. We, we definitely need a sense of discipleship that we're learning and we're learning together the truth. There's wonderful answers to our questions. So the asking, the seeking and knocking we can receive and find. And then finally is that fellowship. And it's a real joy to be with you all here. And so it's a real privilege to be a part of this great journey. And I hope you join us uh, for the next 50 times. Excellent. Awesome. Thank you so much, Father Will Combs, a pastor of St. Mary Magdalene Catholic Church. Phil, t tell us, you know, I am looking forward to hearing what you uh, hope to gain from this. Uh, I know you've experienced this before, but in this setting, it's going to be new. Yeah, it is going to be new. And first, I just want to say no fair going after Father Will. <laughs> just no fair. Uh, but I kind of sense that it's going to be like this. So I'm going to that litany of humility is really going to help. Um, I'm really excited to be here with you guys and, and, and with those that hopefully will be tuning in and listening to us. I, I thought I would just give a little background on how I came to the program. Jorge started back uh, 27 years ago. My journey started back in late 16. I had a, I was sort of in charge of a week, uh, bi-weekly Catholic men's Bible study, and I'm going to put it in quotes, Bible study. And uh, we had been doing it for about six years. And over those years, there was a bunch of older men, some younger ones, but uh, particularly the older men, we all got lazier and lazier and lazier in this Bible study. They didn't want to work. They didn't want to study. They didn't want to do anything that required homework. So we got very simple in this Bible study uh, and just started bringing in the last two gospel readings from the last two weeks and say, uh, let's talk about 
let's talk about these. Well, there was no expert in the room. There was never an expert in the room. And it was an open discussion. Mm -hmm. And the way that works is uh, those that love to speak speak the entire time, right? And those that don't, don't say much. Uh, so it was, it was very unstructured. I, I got frustrated. I wasn't, I didn't feel like we were growing in knowledge or holiness. We, we weren't doing too much prayer, praying, you know, except at the end. And so I put out a call. I said, hey, who's got a program? We need a program, something better than this. And the next week, in walks Jorge Aguilar, whom I did not know. And he says, I've, he says, I've got your program. Uh, Bishop Sheen, this is what you need to do. And so we did some talking back and forth, and, and finally I just, we just pushed it through and said, let's start this. Uh, and so we embarked on the journey. And from the very first time I heard the first lesson, it was the first time I'd ever heard Bishop Sheen speak. I didn't grow up as a Catholic. I didn't grow up with any religion in my house. And, and so I'd heard his name. I'd been a Catholic since 2003, heard his name, but hadn't heard him. I was transfixed from the first moment I started to uh, hear him. And then as the weeks went on, I felt myself, my soul uh, being transformed. I felt my brain being rewired mm -hmm. and understanding my Catholic faith in a completely different different way. About halfway in, I was getting on fire. Uh, I was already on fire. I did Axe Retreats and RCIA and everything. I got on a new level of fire. And together uh, with Jorge, we talked about what can we do to bring this uh, to, to everybody. The world needs to hear this. Mm -hmm. Catholics need to hear this. Non-Catholics need to hear this. Atheists need to hear this. Uh, he's going to teach us uh, in, in such a simple way through listening to a conversation, and it's the most interesting conversation you're ever mm -hmm. going to hear. Ever, uh, he's going to teach us, as Jorge mentioned, just some basic philosophy. We haven't been taught philosophy for the last generation. Mm -hmm. We've lost that. We don't. I've never been taught it. It's how to think and how to think about truth. Mm -hmm. How to think your way to truth, and the way he puts things out there. Once you learn the way he does it, you don't unlearn it. The things learned are not unlearned. And the most crazy thing about it is, in today's busy world, when it's so hard to say yes to things. You do this without any discernible effort. All you have to do is listen. And the word of God, the understanding of God comes in you. So it's amazing. I can't wait to do it. Awesome. I love that. Uh, I have to say as well, it, it takes you to a new level. Wherever you're at, uh, you think you're on fire now. Wait till you get a bit of sheen. Uh, you'll get to a new level. Thank you for sharing that, Phil. Um, Greg, Greg Weston, I'd love to hear what you are, are looking for to, to obtain to, to your takeaway. Okay. from this 50 weeks. Sure. Well, I'm, I'm uh, another one that uh, was introduced to uh, the Sheen program by way of actually Phil inviting me to something that Jorge had been inviting me to for many weeks, I'm sure. Um, and I don't know why a banker has any more, to, uh, any more clout than a, than a man who does alarm systems, but you know, it's a, a but you know, it, that's, that's the way it went, but it was alarming. Yes, he did. And so, um, and I, and I could bank on it. So that's, that's what I, that's how I started that. So, um, so I'm, I'm a businessman. I, I have a, a couple of different interests in San Antonio, uh, some, um, mostly hospitality related. And so it's it's just a um, you know I, I come at it from a very uh, I, lo I love God's word and I love the I love to learn more about God's word and, and um, I think that that was the the intriguing part for me and uh, so it was really good I, I so I, I will also am very much wanting to bring the love of Jesus into my into my work environment to I'm I'm the boss of about 200 people so it, it's it's always an, an opportunity to say you know at some point in my life I'll be standing before the Lord saying and he'll say what did you do with my son, and so I'm, I'm always wanting to wanting to formulate my own response to that by by the fruit of my, my life. So I'm, that's what uh, I'm hoping to enable it. To, to so much of the the process uh, through the um, through the, the what Sheen is uh, what I've already learned during the Sheen programs uh, have been has been wonderful to to sort of simplify some core. I think somebody said some very simple simplification of it, some very core philosophies, as, as brother said. So it, it's it's um it's it really my, my ultimate objective is to is to grow deeper in, in my understanding and and uh, it's, it's sort of 
uh, assimilation of, of Jesus personally, and then also want to want to. Uh, my wife is Catholic, and so I I'm very much wanting to understand the faith that is that is, she is she has uh, stayed with uh, not stayed with. I mean she's she's done all the, the, these years, and she grew up with and that sort of thing. So it's really been a, a, a wonderful thing. No, more than more than just seeing how the how Catholicism engages with Jesus. That's that's really what I'm what I'm hoping for, um, or not hoping for, but. But I've experienced already, and so um, I'm also interested to know that uh, Sheen was the very first radio minister, even before Billy Graham. Uh, you know, way in the '50s, and uh, so what we're listening to is in, uh, probably the middle of his, his original career. There was it was a wonderful thing to understand that here's a guy that captivated all of all of um, Christendom in in the in the '50s and early '60s, and then of course um, so he's 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 a very very good teacher. And so I'm, I'm that's, getting that. So um, really, just uh, wanting, longing to to get more of um, more engaged with my faith, getting more engaged with with um, who Jesus is and how uh, how it's uh, how it's experienced with with I'll say other religions, specifically Catholicism. So it's 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 good that way. Um, my my hope is that I'll get better at um, that I will be able to portray what I hear Bishop Sheen saying and it, not only to my my own uh, various people that listen to me uh, or that I hope listen to me in my in my in my business but also um, it, in in the way of, of encountering people that you might not know well and, and, uh, and some of the Bishop Sheen's very basic truths are really are distilled down to some things that are just simple simple ideas that that can then Pave the way to an introduction to Jesus Himself, and um, so so obviously my motivation is uh, I went to an axe retreat years ago, and and um, and I really felt that like God said I want you here. So though I'm not a I'm not a Catholic uh, by upbringing or by um, by um, what's the word um, by by following, but but I, I do uh, see this Bishop Sheen program as being very instrumental to the faith of uh, faith of our fathers, as the as the old song says, but specifically to, to being able to portray that faith to to my to my fellow man. Amen. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, <coughs> You know, uh, we're blessed over these next 50 episodes to have with us two beautiful priests, uh, Father Will Combs and Father Clay Hunt. And uh, plainly put, what I would love to get out of this is, you know, I tell people all the time, although they don't know this, uh, th they, these two rank as my, as my top two go-to priests uh, are the ones that I know, and I know pl plenty of them. And uh, I share with people that after you, you spend time with either one of them, uh, you feel like you were just in the presence of Jesus. Like one of the apostles spending time with him, kind of just relaxing. And, and as Father John Ricardo says during one of our shows on, on Catholic Radio, wasting time with Jesus. It's such a peaceful time to be with them. And, and, and what they have, I want. That peace that they have, I want to gain. And, uh, and from what I've heard from Sheen in the past, bits and pieces here and there, you know, he spent an hour with our Lord in Eucharistic adoration every single day of his life. Uh, I think uh, while he was in seminary, he started. And regardless if he was in another country or if he went to a church to, to pray for an hour and, and found the doors locked, I think one time or maybe more than once, um, that was the occasion. So what he did is he just knelt down in front of the doors. He knew for a fact that Jesus was in there, the tabernacle, and spent that hour there with our Lord and praying. Uh, I have to imagine that that's part of what feeds these beautiful priests, and I want to gain that as well, uh, that desire, to grow in that desire. Um, what Sheen also reminds me to do is to start with me every day, meaning my conversion every single day. Every day should be a conversion, and to fully understand what that means. I'm a sinner, but I have to strive for holiness. I have to strive for perfection. Be perfect as our Heavenly Father is perfect. And Sheen has a great way of reminding me and hope to remind you as well to do that. And again, I see that in my, in my brothers, my friends, and these wonderful priests that I know. And he takes the words of the gospel like uh, Jorge mentioned and makes them bite-sized because I, I don't think I have a big mouth. <laughs> but uh, I want to be able to chew on every bit and piece that comes uh, through the good news of Jesus Christ, uh, the Word of God, and the way Sheen takes... The, the, the scriptures and the teachings of the Catholic Church and puts them all together so I can better understand them. And not just for me, though, to turn it around and reflect that to every single person 
that God puts in front of me throughout my daily life, the next five minutes, the next 10 minutes, the, uh, whoever it may be, God put that person there. God allowed that person to be there. I need to radiate Christ. I need to reflect Christ. I need to be a witness to them because I may be the only Jesus they ever meet, and I better do a really good job of it. And she reminds me of that every single time I listen to him. There's a nugget that I take with me, or nuggets, and I, I love that, that I need to be the face of Jesus uh, to the smallest or the largest and everywhere in between for every soul that he puts in front of me. And I truly love that call. I love that vocation. I love that, uh, I love that I'm developing that yearning for it. And every time I hear Sheen, I grow in that desire to do the, Lord, to do the will of our Holy Father, our, our God in heaven. So that's what I hope to get from it. But uh, I look forward to hearing what uh, my buddy, Father Clay Hunt, has to gain, or wants to gain. And tell Praise me. Praise be to God. It's uh, it's wonderful to be on this journey with this band of brothers. I have a lot of respect for these guys, and they were going to go through these teachings together over this time ahead of us. It's very exciting. Uh, just to let you know a little bit about about myself, uh, I'm a homegrown vocation to the priesthood uh, from the Archdiocese of San Antonio. I grew up in a little town called Brackettville, and uh, I'm a little cowboy. So I grew up there tending the flocks and the herds, and that's a wonderful blessing in that sense that the Lord was forming me to be a shepherd of souls. I had no idea that I was going to uh, chase to the priesthood one day. Uh, I played football Americano. I was a, a student. I studied f for a great part of my life, and... Um, actually, today, I want to thank my parents. Today marks the day that I was born as a son of God the Father. January the 28th, 1973, I was a month and a week old when my parents took me to the altar of the Lord to, to be baptized, to become a son of God. And so today, I would say, is my truest birthday. And uh, even though I wasn't always close to the things of the faith I I, be, I I gained a distaste for the things of the world I realized uh, it was a, I was 25 years old I realized that those things weren't fulfilling me so I became a missionary and I would serve as a missionary for seven years around the world but I remember one of the first places I served was in Belize Central America uh, on the western frontier of that little country on the border of Guatemala. And uh, myself and some of the other young missionaries, uh, we, we got into listening to these teachings of Archbishop Fulton Sheen. And one thing that's true is that the world never knew anything about truth. That's what the Lord said. The world never knew anything about truth. Uh, and so to encounter to such a strength of presentation of truth was really an epiphany and a, a life-changing uh, moment and movement for me as a young person. We were there with uh, youth and openness and uh, desire. And so to encounter the teaching of this great bishop of the Lord was so refreshing because I'm going to tell you, obviously the world, we know that the world never knows anything about truth, but I would say the greatest poverty of our time is that the teaching office of Holy Mother Church has fallen down. The teaching office of the church. So there's a lot of shepherds out there who are not fulfilling what their purpose is to shepherd the people of God and to shepherd them well, to teach them the truth to God. Uh, so growing up in that kind of environment and living and breathing in this time that we are, that's why I think that the teaching of, of Archbishop Fulton Sheen is so magnificent and uh, it's edifying to me. I've I've been a student of theology for more than 20 years. And, uh, you know, somebody was saying that this, this program of Archbishop Fulton Sheen is going to be going into the seminaries. And I was like, that's good. 
That'll be the, the most solid and best formation that they receive out of their entire seminary career. That's, that's unfortunate to the reality of these days, but that's why I find it exciting. And I think it's going to be beneficial. I think it's going to be like a fresh rain upon a parched land to many people. I, I serve in the prisons and I give a shout out to all the beautiful ladies that are incarcerated. We always pray for you. We're proud of you for your docility and your desire for the Lord. And to all the men in white, we call them, uh, because they they already know the, uh, the counterfeit ways of the world. And these persons to whom I serve, they're able to recognize uh, when someone is is giving them truth and when someone is manipulating them. They're able because they've been schooled in the ways of the world. And they know very they're 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 able to easily recognize what is authentic and what is not true. And so they love this stuff. So we give a shout out to all you uh men and women and we hope that you're going to enjoy this journey and that it's uh, beneficial to you. We pray for you all the time. And to all the other people, as Father Will mentioned, you know, there's this, this uh, teaching as the, from the first proclamation of the gospel in its fullness is for all peoples and for all nations, and for all races, and for all tongues, and spanning to, to every time, the truth is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so we're excited about this journey, and we ask God's blessing to all of us that we may increase from it. Amen. Thank you so much, Father Clay. You know, it does remind me that uh, I wish to love everybody that the Lord puts in my path. Love everybody, period. Um, but I can't truly love them as He wants us to love them unless I know Him better. That's the last point that I forgot to add. I want to get to know Him, our Lord, better so I can love every single one of you all better. Um, Jorge, Jorge Aguilar, tell us a little bit why, what you, I haven't participated many a time in this. I'm sure you know that you're going to gain some more out of this as well. Well, uh, every time we do this, it is, uh, the, the Lord is always revealing a, a message, I believe, not only unique uh, for the group, uh, but for unique for the listeners. And, and, uh, and I think that whatever drew, uh, whatever drew you here to, the, to today, whether you may think it was an accidental click on your computer, maybe it was somebody who gave you a brochure, maybe it was something you had heard about, uh, but whatever drew you, I, I think that, as, as uh, um, Richard said, this God who loves us, that, that God has planned us so uniquely. As scripture says, that he, he knew us in our mother's womb. So he, the God who's created us, the God who loves us, the God who's redeemed us, isn't going to give up on us. And, and I think if you found yourself here on this channel, you found yourself here on, on watching this video, that, that God has a plan. And, and I firmly believe that that plan is to reveal himself, he, to reveal himself where you're at. And, and for those of us that, find, that, that, that are in prison, uh, that we think that the Lord knew what he was going to take. If, this, if he'd gone to such an extent to die on a cross, will not he go to such an extent to reach us where we are today? And so uh, as we begin this journey, the encouragement that, that I give to each of us and, and to those that are listening and viewing is take this journey. Because I want to say this, and it's kind of maybe a strange thing to say, but the devil plays dominoes. And, and that, that there's an enemy that is looking for us to fail. But there is greater is he who's in us than he who's in the world. The fact that God has given us, he's, he's downloading, as it were, uh, uh, grace. He's downloading, this word, words you may not understand yet, but he's downloading something to us. He's giving us something to know that we can get out of the game of the enemy's lies and enter into the reality of God's presence in our life. And, and as the scripture says in the prophet Hosea, that my people are dying for lack of knowledge. 
And so it's this realization that, that God wants to give us a message, but we have to be tuned in to receive it. And, and I just, uh, my prayer for, for the listeners and is, is stay tuned in because there is a message and it is uniquely and powerfully formed for each of us. Amen. Thank you so much, Jorge, uh, for sharing that with us. So let's do like we always do. We always talk about the, the, the third, third, and third. One third listening to Sheen, one third is, is to, to reflect. But the other third, the last third, is just as equally important, is prayers. So we come together and we, we, we end with our prayers. So in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Heavenly Father, we praise you and we thank you because by your holy cross you redeemed the world. Jesus, thank you for this opportunity to come together as brothers and sisters and those that are tuning in to us through through television and radio and we just we just thank you for calling us together your mystical body to reveal to us your love and so we know that you want to hear from us and so we we lift up our prayers our prayers of thanksgiving our prayers of petition and our prayers of supplication so those of us that have special prayers let's lift them up at this time heavenly father we thank you for your servant archbishop fulton sheehan and we thank you for this teacher who once uh, taught us, saying, no man discovers anything big unless he makes himself small. So Lord, we pray in this great journey that we discover wonderful big things and by making ourselves small. We pray that you deliver us from all our selfish desires and f fears, that we be free, free to love, free to learn, and free to live uh, the life worth living, that we indeed may magnify the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. prayer. I'd like to pray for all those who stumble across this program, all those who are searching and who have a yes in them, a yes just to start, to start to try to know God and to, to be willing to go on a little journey with us. I pray for all those that are around this table and especially our two priests who, are, who do such wonderful work 24-7, devoting their entire lives to bringing other people to God. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. prayer. Lord, I want to thank you for... Uh, for these men of God and these priests and and these uh, and all those who call upon the name of the Lord and uh, so Father, your your word says, um, "Come to me, and I will show you great and mighty things which you do not know." And uh, that's in Jeremiah thirty three verse three. And I I'm so encouraged by that so often because it um, it's it's the it's the cry of our heart. Lord, help me. And G and God says, "Come to me. Come, come on." Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm so encouraged by, by um, those who, are, who uh, hear that voice or discover that, that emptiness in their, in their hearts and lives, and that they will turn to God, turn to Jesus as the author and the finisher of their faith, because he is the beginning and the end and the, and the, the alpha and the omega. So Lord, I, I, I pray that there's a, that there's a, 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 a that you, you will bring all men. Your word says, when we lift up the name of the Lord, you will draw all men to us. So Father, we, we pray that you, you Lord, will draw the, by the Holy Spirit, draw these, these individuals to this program, that they may grow and, and grow deeper in their understanding of who Jesus is and how much God loves us. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. If it be your holy will, you could make me well. Father, I, I ask uh, for my bride, for me to be the husband she needs me to be, to help get her to heaven. For my children, for my Maya, my Ava, my Elijah, my Stella, that I may be the father that they need me to be, to help get them to heaven. And for all those uh, mothers and fathers that aren't able to be with their kids, that they can still pray for them and be who, who God needs them to be to, their, to their, their children. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the institution of marriage that is besieged on every front in this time. May the Lord raise up that beautiful and glorious institution. We pray for the incarcerated person that even through this journey that a light may enter into the darkness of those places and to raise up the men and women incarcerated. And finally, we pray for all the youth, for this young generation that, as the Lord promised from all long ago, 
In those last days, he would raise up the greatest of champions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. prayers. Heavenly Father, we lift up these prayer petitions. Those are the ones that we've spoken here in the studio. And those that are our listening audience and viewing audience, that those that they have lifted up. We lift them up to you, O Heavenly Father, with the prayer your Son Jesus has given us to pray. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And, and lead us not us into not temptation, temptation, but deliver us from evil. Us from Amen. Amen. Hail Mary, full, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen. Saint Michael, Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince and the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, sick in the ruin of souls. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And through the intercession of the holy St. Thomas of Aquinas, mm -hmm. may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, Amen. and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And that brings to close our introduction to the Fulton Sheen Prayer Group Apostolate Show. God love you. Beloved family, I want to challenge you to gather together in small groups. This is what the church needs. The church began in the house of Nazareth, and then it grew in the upper room, and they continue to meet in homes as well as in the temple. It is so important we gather together in the name of Jesus. And that's what's so great about this venerable Fulton Sheehan uh, face-sharing group is to gather together, to call on the Holy Spirit, a litany of humility, a humble heart so you can listen and learn. God speaking through this wonderful servant, these 20-minute talks, there are a total of 50 of them, philosophy of life. And by gathering together a total of 50 times and sharing the faith together and sharing your own personal journey together and praying together, the Holy Spirit, there's Jesus in your midst. And it's a powerful way to be transformed so you can transform the city and the world. It only takes 10 people to save a city. And you might be one of them. How is God calling you to gather together a small group and hear and live the good news? Please join us again for another lesson from Archbishop Fulton Sheen. You can also listen to lessons and read transcripts at your leisure by visiting the website theuniversalway.com. That's theuniversalway.com. God love you.